Hello again, and welcome to Seeking Silent Satisfaction. Today I will be discussing equilibration and latency in autoclave validation. Uh, this arises from a question actually from the original autoclave validation video, so yay! So let's get into it. So who am I? Oh, I'm Paul Gaiman. I'm a microbiologist with 15 years experience working in sterile and non-sterile pharma, where I have experience with both sterile injectable liquids and non-sterile creams, ointments and lotions. I've also performed a number of autoclave validations and other validations and all that sort of fun stuff. So I analyze and improve the control processes of manufacturing companies, allowing them to release batches sooner in order for them to operate in an order ready state so they can reduce or eliminate their order observations uh, so you, they can release quality product in full and on time. I have solid exposure to PICS, PE009, which is the Good Manufacturing Practice Guidelines, uh, ISO 14698 and 14644, which relate to clean rooms and associated controlled environments. Uh, ISO 13408, which is aseptic processing of healthcare products. And ISO 17665, sterilization of healthcare products. So all this should mean that hopefully what I say is correct. If not, let me know, because I, if I'm wrong, I'd like people to tell me. And if I'm correct, well, give me a thumbs up like share all that fun stuff I can be found on LinkedIn Twitter my microbiology blog so check those out for more information about how my skills can potentially help you what is in this for you or well, basically those responsible for planning conducting or reviewing autocollate validations uh, would need to know important concepts related to this idea a question asked during my autoclave validation presentation or asked of the validation presentation was please explain about equilibration time and lag time in autoclave validation you might find I use latency and lag interchangeably because they pretty much are um, how are these two concepts different and where do they apply in validation calculations so this is intended to be a short video to answer that So, as part of discussing and defining equilibration and lag times in order clay validation, there's three concepts I would like to talk about. Namely, equilibration times, lag times, and thermal load. So, let's get into equilibration time. This is the time taken for all temperature probes to reach the set temperature of the chamber. So for a typical autoclave cycle, that's how long it takes to reach the 121 degrees that is required for your kill cycle. And this applies during your operation qualification, so when the autoclave is empty. So that allows you to identify cold spots, and if they're present, it informs the placement of your temperature probes during your performance qualification or qualifications. Uh, so basically your yeah, validation runs and by starting your validation cycle with a cold autoclave the amount of energy needed to heat the chamber is increased so that's uh, part of the thermal load that we'll be discussing this translates into a longer time for your temperature probes to heat up and for the autoclave to heat up to re the required temperature and by determining your equilibration time you'll also be able to identify the cold spots as I said so as part of your PQ, if you do find cold spots, whack some more probes around the area and um, you get some more valuable data, hopefully. And also, yeah, that's one of the reasons why each year validation runs should begin with the cold autoclave. So, cold autoclave, more temperature required to heat up to require temperature, so effectively your worst case. 
So what is the lag time? Well, the lag time is the time taken for an item in the chamber to reach the temperature of the corresponding temperature probe. This is dependent on the thermal load of both the chamber and the item being probed. A liquid may show a longer lag time than a metal coupling, or it may not. Your temperature tracing will demonstrate where the lag is. Um, and this is the other reason why each of your validation runs should begin with the cold autoclave. There is less thermal energy in the system, so lag time should be longer, and therefore each of your validation runs will represent a worse case. So one way to explain this is think of your fridge. You might have a jar of jam, uh, some pickled onions, maybe a big container of milk in your fridge. When you open the fridge door, those items don't instantly heat up because there's a uh, lag time between the items in the fridge heating up versus the change of temperature in the surrounding air. Uh, if, and also, if you were to place those items outside of the fridge, you're quite likely going to find that each item, due to its unique nature, is going to heat up differently and take a longer time to reach room temperature. And the time that these items take to reach room temperature would be the equivalent of a lag time within an autoclave uh, loading pattern slash validation cycle. And finally, lag time can also be the loaded chambers version on the equilibration time. So when all temperature probe pairs are taken into account. So you've got a probe next to something you want to check out the temperature of and a probe inside what you want to check out the temperature of which is demonstrated by my little uh, sketch there. So next up and finally thermal load. So what is thermal load? That's pretty much the demand for heat energy or the amount of energy required in this case to heat an object from room temperature because hopefully you've started your autoclave cycle from rest to the chamber temperature which will be 121 degrees celsius and typically the larger the object and the less thermally conductive it is the longer it will take to heat up so you'll find a piece of metal in an autoclave exposed to the steam or the most heat that should heat up faster than anything else because it's got great thermal conductivity uh, Items within glass uh, that then contain liquid, they might heat up the next fastest because water is pretty good to conduct heat, but there will be a little bit of air which doesn't conduct moist heat due to the nation is not moist. So the liquid within the container would have to actually have to heat up, sorry, would have to heat up and become steam and therefore moist before it could transfer the load. So you might find lag time is different there. Uh, with the jam, pickled onions and milk example from my previous slide, the thermal load of these items is what prevents them instantly heating up when removed from the fridge and it helps keep them cool during periodic door openings. So next up I will chat about the summary. So basically, in conclusion or summary, we have discussed Three things, the equilibration time, which is the time between the first and last probe to reach the set temperature and is used as part of the installation qualification. So that is your empty chamber, which also you fired up from rest. Next up we have lag time, which is the time between a probe and its corresponding challenge item to reach the set temperature, so typically 121 degrees, and is used as part of the performance qualification. So during your loading pattern validation, when you actually place the load on the system. So therefore the thermal load should be more. So finally, thermal load. That determines how long a challenge takes <coughs> excuse me, to reach the surrounding temperature. So as part of all the autoclave validation, uh, when you're discussing or calculating equilibration times, that's on an empty chamber from rest. And your lag time is when there's a challenge within the chamber. Also, hopefully you've begun your validation cycle from rest. So finally, some references. Uh, before I began this presentation, I did a quick search just for a couple of uh, references slash to jog my memory. So there's a little article on LinkedIn about uh, 
these concepts. There's also some questions posed at a Pharma Guidance website. And I've also provided a few links in my original autoclave pre validation presentation, uh, my original blog discussion, and the blog discussion of this. So all those links will be in the um, text of this upload. So yeah, if you found any of this interesting or informative or useful, share, like, subscribe. And if you're really keen, there's a link to sling me some money because we all need to read and live and all that fun stuff. And ideally, you'll see this, you'll go, ooh, he knows his stuff, and you'll give me a, hopefully, a full-time job in your lab without the need to check my references, which are really old and crusty now. So, yeah, until next time, this has been Paul Yeaman, a scientist seeking satisfaction. Kapla!